In this series, we're going to deploy the Active Directory Platform as a Service option across all three major cloud providers. And so what we're going to do is do an AWS, an AWS Directory service. We're going to do um, an Azure, the Intra Domain Services, also known as Active Directory Domain Services. Then we're going to use the Google Managed Microsoft AD and Google Cloud. And so what we're going to do is first set up the, the networks required to deploy these, um, and they're different across all three providers, and we'll go over exactly what, what the network requirements are. Then you actually go and do, you deploy the directory after you've created the network. And then once we've done that, what we're going to do is spin up a Linux server and spin up a Windows server. And when the Windows server starts, it's going to end up creating four users and four groups that are POSIX Linux compliant that set the GID number, UID number necessary for those users to be accessed uh, concurrently from both Windows and Linux. We use a triple SD for that to authenticate users on Linux. We use a LDAP mode for Azure, and then we use, use, use a direct AD connect. And once we join the domain servers, we're going to run that script that's going to create to users, at least for Azure and um, GCP, it's required that you create a custom OU for your users, and we'll walk through that. And when we create those accounts and the AD join commands, accounts, we're going to take all those credentials and we're going to stuff them into Secrets Manager, Key Vault, and Google Secret Manager so that when we have these join scripts, they will not be hard-coded. The passwords and credentials will not be hard-coded. They'll be using the credentials from the Secrets Manager to communicate that uh, between both the users and the boot scripts. And the idea is we, we're using uh, Terraform and shell scripts to have a push button install. So you should be able to just run the apply and provided that you've met the prerequisites, which are pretty basic, you should be able to deploy end to end an Active Directory platform as a service um, option on all three cloud providers and then a Linux VM and a uh, Windows VM joined to that domain ready to be logged into. You got the AWS directory solution, we're, and we have a diagram for what we're going to build. We're going to do it in US East 2. We're going to build a subnet, two subnets in our VPC, and AD is going to be balanced between those subnets. Subnets and AWS are typically segmented by availability zone or data center, and so um, you need a separate subnet to get that high availability to have it in two different data centers. So when you end up deploying, you get a domain controller and two domain controllers in each subnet that you provide, or one control domain controller. You get two subnets or two domain controllers in total with uh, AWS. And then we spin up a Windows instance, and in that Windows instance, we in the boot script we join to the domain. We create some users and groups. We store all our credentials and secrets. Linux, it boots up, it gets the join credentials out of the Secrets Manager, and then it, it joins. So it, it seems fairly simple, but there's a lot of moving parts here. And then once you have this infrastructure up and running, you can do all sorts of things. You can replicate your AD, you can spin up more instances, you can connect workspaces to them. So this is just sort of an entry point into getting a managed domain within AWS look at Azure. Azure went through some naming issues that used to be called Azure Active Directory Domain Services. Most of the documentation still calls it that. But a couple of years ago, they renamed the identity properly to Intra Domain Services. And as I can tell, very few people actually use that name. Uh, it feels like sort of the Twitter versus X situation where the company really wants you to use this name, but everybody seems to be continuing on with calling it Active Directory Domain Services. So uh, with Azure, what you need to do is you need to spin up a, um, a, a subnet just for Active Directory. And then what we did is we created one virtual network for the Active Directory. Then we put our Active Directory in that instances. Now it's multi-zonal multi subnets and um, Azure work differently than Active than AWS in that you can have multiple zones in the same subnets. So 
what you do is you segregate subnets by function. So our function here are Active Directory in one subnet, and then our VMs in another subnet. Uh, the instances boot up, just like on the other one, it will create the four users and four groups that are POSIX compliant, and then it'll store the credentials in the key vault. The Linux uh, AD instance, it doesn't quite join the domain because we use the LDAP mode, but it is effectively the same thing. It's using Active Directory as the um, identity provider using the, in the credentials that you need to log into the server with SSH are stored in the key vault. The last one is the GCP Active Directory. Uh, this one, you know, it's like everything with GCP is easier. Like it took me a long time to get the Azure one working because of all the asynchronous nature. Uh, it took me like a day to get the GCP working. It just worked very well. Um, same idea. You you spin up your Active Directory instance, then you uh, join two instances, and it does the same thing where it adds the users, stores everything in Secret Manager. The only thing that's unique with Google Cloud is you when you create the uh your active directory instance you give it a cider block and so if you study it and look at what it's actually doing it actually creates a vpc that's hidden from you you don't know and so it, it, it it's this hidden vpc with the cider blocks that you've given it and that's where it puts your domain controllers and everything which is kind of smart because you could screw up like with security groups and firewalls and certain ports there's lots of ports that have to be opened with active directory because there's lots of services so they manage all that before so they kind of um make it so you can't screw it up and then you go and you add an authorized vpc and effectively what that does is does some vc vpc peering and routing underneath the covers you don't see it so, and once you do that, the authorized VPC, it puts in the DNS records for your cloud. So you just effectively create your, your VPC and put your instances in there. Same thing with the instances, the, the Windows server starts up, it uh, uses the credentials in the Secrets Manager to get the join credentials. Uh, the join credentials, I guess we're gonna cover that in a second. And then Linux, it does the same thing. It's going to boot up the Linux. This, it does a join like the AWS one and gets it out of Secrets Manager. So let's do a quick demo. And I've built my Azure environment. And in my Secrets Manager, I've got their credentials. Now, I used Bastion to log in. And so I've logged into the server with the mCloud admin user credentials. It, it brings this up and that lets me know, hey, I'm an admin, that it's a Linux, that it's, um, I'm in that AAD group, the admin group, and when it does that, it automatically makes you a local admin, so it, then when you log in the first time, it brings up the server manager when you're an admin. So let me close that, and it is joined to Active Directory, so I'll have all, and we also install the Active Directory tools. So you go into here, and you've got your Active Directory users and groups. And you can see you've got your users and group. I'm going to turn on advanced features because that's what allows me to see the git, the git and UID numbers. So if I go in there and I go to, first off, this is Azure, but you'll see that the users are synced. So you have mCloud admin. That's what I'm logged in as. And then I created an OU for my new users. And this is the, these are the users that I created. And if I go to like India, and I go to uh, attribute editor, that's when you'll see the GID number set. And you know, I can go and edit it, mostly you script it. And then you have a uh, Kumar, and I like go to um, attribute editor, you're going to say C ID number, and then UID number at the end here. All right, so that's it for what it looks like on the um, Windows server. Uh, the last one is the Unix server. And so we'll go back and we'll go back to my virtual machines. And I'm going to go to here and I'm going to say, OK, let me connect with Bastion. Connect with Bastion. And I go back to my key vault and I'm going to log in as John Smith. And first off, you just use J Smith. So I'm going to go and say J Smith. 
And then I'm going to take that password. You got to be very careful when copying the password. It's easy to get it wrong. And for that, show that looks right. Hit connect. And I'm logged in. I can say, who am I? I can do ID. It's going to give you those numbers we talked about. This means I'm connected to the identity provider. If I do get ENT group mCloud users, you're going to get all that. Get NT group X admins. If I do ID a Kumar, ID R Raj Patel, ID Emily Davis, you're going to see it resolve those user groups by the number and name. And then finally, because I'm Linux admin, I can go and do sudo bash. Who am I? I can also log in as admin. I can. Um, so that is it for the intro. Um, what we'll do is build the exact same solution with very similar uh, options um, across all three providers.